A Creature by Trevor Allen Chapter 6 Morning dawned when I arrived, so I found a hiding place in the fields just outside town. I was thinking about how to approach you, when a young child came running through the tall grass. When he saw me, he stopped and just stared. As I looked at him, a thought struck me. This little boy was unprejudiced. If I could just reach out to him, ask him to be my friend, I wouldn't be so lonely on this peopled earth. It was already May when the letter from my father arrived, but it was not what I expected. My dear Victor, you have probably waited impatiently to hear from me concerning your homecoming. At first I was tempted to simply tell you the day on which we should expect you. But that would be a cruel kindness, and I can't do it. Your brother William is dead. That sweet, gentle child was murdered. Last Sunday, Elizabeth, your two brothers and I went out for a walk. It was afternoon before we reached home, only to discover that Ernest, who had run off with William, had reached the house before us. But he asked me where his brother was. A search was made, and at about five in the morning I discovered my boy lying in the grass. His neck was broken. There was a handprint. Elizabeth insisted on seeing the body. She told me that she had let him wear a very valuable locket with a portrait of your mother in it. It was not found and was undoubtedly the temptation that caused his death. She needs you. She blames herself. Come home, son. Your unfortunate father, Alphonse Frankenstein. I grabbed the boy and pulled him towards me. But as soon as I touched him, he screamed. I, I told him not to be afraid. I even smiled. But he bit my arm and called me a monster. I told him I just wanted to be his friend. He said that he would tell his father, the Magistrate Frankenstein. <sighs> Magistrate meant nothing to me, but your name. It was completely dark when I arrived outside Geneva. I wanted to visit the spot where my brother was murdered. I left the coach and went on foot. I saw a storm passing the summit of the mountains, making beautiful images in the air. Watching the tempest, I suddenly saw a figure in the clump of trees near me. I stood there, frozen. I couldn't be wrong. I saw it. A flash of lightning showed me its face. The thing I had created was still alive. He must have seen the hate in my eyes, because he screamed more loudly than before and tried to run. I just put a hand over his mouth to keep him quiet, but then I heard a snap. I let go, but he just fell on the grass and stopped moving. Over a year had passed since the night I loosed this demon on the world. How many people had it killed? I spent the rest of the night in the storm. My mind was filled with thoughts of misery and carnage. When morning dawned, I ran to my father's house. I wanted to tell them the truth. To get help and go after the thing. To kill it. 
but I didn't. I knew how my tale would sound. How it still sounds. Like madness. Welcome home, Victor. I wish it didn't have to be this way. But it's good to see you. Father said- Ernest, there's something I have to tell you. It can wait. My god, you look awful. Have you slept? You should rest. No! No more rest! There's no time! No time! You should see Father. He's not well. Later, perhaps, but at least talk to Elizabeth. She misses you. And blames herself. I know who killed him. You've heard the news. Who could believe that Justine could be capable of such... Justine? Justine Moritz. Elizabeth's friend? She's accused? But, but they're wrong. No one believes it. Do they? No one did at first. But the evidence is... I thought you knew. The trial is this afternoon. As I stared at my victim, I felt sorry for what I had done, and angry with you for giving me these emotions. I went to see Elizabeth. He was your father's son, your brother. But what was he to me? But she wouldn't speak to me. I knew that you would feel this loss. She couldn't even look at me. And for the first time, I felt powerful. She felt responsible. You're all so fragile. The necklace she let William wear. I saw something around his neck, glittering in the sunlight, and I took it. I was responsible, but I didn't know what to say. It was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. Justine was her close friend, and I knew she was innocent. Then I opened it and saw the face inside. I would have confessed everything. But then I saw the look in her eyes. Those eyes, staring up at me. I felt peace. So peaceful. But when I saw that it was only an image, and that I would never be so close to such a creature. She'd think I was a raving madman. My rage returned, and I left the body there for the crows. I said nothing. I found the barn nearby that looked empty, and went inside to hide. The trial was over before it began. woman was there sleeping on the straw. She was even more beautiful than the portrait I carried. The facts were against her. She had been out the whole night of the murder. I bent over her and whispered in her ear, I would give my life for your love. She had been seen close to where the body was. Then, I thought that she could never love me, or even look at me. And the stolen necklace was found in her pocket. I put the locket in a fold of her dress. She said she had been searching for the boy and had rested in a barn. It was a gift. It was all I had to give her. But she could not explain how the necklace came to be there. She began to wake up, and I fled. The ballots were cast, and they were all black. 
I didn't mean for her to be blamed for my crime. She died on the scaffold. Later, when I understood what had happened. Because of my creation. Something inside of me felt revenged. I told no one my tale. If I couldn't possess such beauty. Not even Elizabeth. Then I wanted to destroy it. Sleep fled from me and I wandered like an evil spirit. This was not what I had intended. I began my work with benevolent intentions. I started off in this world clean and pure. I wanted to be useful to my fellow men. But hatred turned me into a miserable creature before you. Now, I'm just a hollow shell of my former self. Walton, learn from me. Don't throw your own life away. It's not my intention. Do you have a home to return to? Yes. So then you went after this, uh, creature? Yes. I left home in search of the thing, and after months, I caught up with it on Mount Blanc. I was nearly at the summit when I saw the figure of a man coming towards me at superhuman speed. It jumped over the crevasses in the ice and vaulted from boulder to boulder. I raised my rifle. It was almost upon me. I took aim, but then it stopped and spoke. Greetings, Frankenstein. I almost dropped my gun. I couldn't believe it. I've waited my whole life to meet you. How dare you approach me? <laughs> I expected this welcome. All men hate me. Even you. You know who I am? Yes, I know you. We are bound together by chains that can only be broken by death. If it would bring back the ones you've killed. I would gladly join you there. <laughs> you want to kill me? You're a mistake that I made. One that I will undo. How dare you? You treat my life like it's something you could just take back. I created you. I can destroy you. You're a monster. That you made. If you do your duty towards me, I will do mine towards you and the rest of mankind. You have to pay for your crimes. Father, please! You don't, don't call me that. What would you have me call you? Lord! Creator! God! You and I are enemies. Not by my choice! Please, listen to me. I will not harm you. What do you have to say? If you will grant me one request, I will leave you in peace. If I refuse... Do you... love your family? Is that a threat? Would you miss them if they were... Gone. I'll shoot you right now. Be calm. Remember that I am your creation. My life may only be pain and suffering, but I will defend it. You're a murderer. You accuse me of murder, and yet you would, with a clear conscience, put me to death. I ask you not to spare me. Just hear my tale. And then, if you're not satisfied, you can destroy the work of your own hands. 
Very well. I'll hear you. It's too cold for you here. Follow me. It led the way across the ice, and I followed. We entered a small hut where the creature must have been residing. I sat down next to an open fire as it began its tale. It is with considerable difficulty that I remember my creation. All the events of that period are confused in my mind. Our cast included Paul Rosenfield, Philip Hoffman, and Boramax Kochnar. The entire production was under the direction of yours truly, Alika Spencer Kochnar, and stage managed by Miranda Whipple. Original composition, sound design, and sound engineer for this presentation created by Gregory James Holmes. Video elements assembled by Philip Hoffman, and episode art designed by me. This is Alika Spencer Kochnar, Chief Talent Officer at the Dragon, inviting you to return for Chapter 7 in Dragon's podcast presentation of The Creature, written by Trevor Allen. In Chapter 7, A Filthy Process, the creature asks for the unthinkable, and Frankenstein promises to give in to his unholy demand. Captain Walton continues to write down the story aboard the frozen ship as Frankenstein recalls his departure home to begin his gruesome task, but cannot complete his experiment. Tune in next Monday to hear the story unfold. Dragon is a nonprofit that depends upon the generosity and participation of you. No gift is too large or too small to make an enormous impact. You can feed the dragon directly online at www.dragonproductions.net forward slash CRE donate. All proceeds made from this link will go directly back to the dragon as well as the artists that made this podcast possible because only together can we help the arts thrive. Thank you so much for listening.